I don't know if I'm fortunate or unfortunate, but I'm uh, old enough to uh, be experiencing now a, a second revolution. Uh, fortunately enough, I was a member of the first revolution, which was, uh, which was the micro revolution. Uh, the end result of the micro revolution is relatively easy. You can put it in your pocket. Uh, this is a flash memory, four gig. Never in my life did I believe that I'll get to a point where I'd see it. You can buy today actually 16 gig. Uh, just to tell you how much behind we uh, as a scientist are able to see uh, what comes through. So I believe that while uh, we were very successful in building a huge industry, which is the semiconductor industry, which is trillions of dollars industry, uh, you can't imagine yourself today uh, doing anything without your iPhone. I see people here using the iPhone, uh, playing with the iPhone, doing some stuff. Each and every one of you is holding what used to be a Cray computer only a few years back. And I believe that where we are today, Nano, definitely based on what I've heard here, uh, is pretty much where I've been in the Silicon Valley in uh, the late 70s. Every week, two or three guys would bump into a car, jump and go to Sand Hill Road, pick up a few millions of dollars, and get the company started. It seems like we are really in the verge of something very similar uh, happening uh, in this space. So let me get started. Uh, actually, Bob, this probably bought from you. I got it from Danny, so one is stealing from another. But I did feel that it was important to make sure that those of you that don't know the difference between micro and micro, etc., for those of us that live in that space, it's very natural. But uh, I'll just talk about the micro, uh, going to the nano, which is one to a thousand in terms of size. So I grew up in the micro. Fortunately enough, uh, either medicine or whatever got me to a point that I can talk about the nano. And the ratios, I think that Bob has uh, covered it. What we have been successful in doing in the medical side as it relates to uh, the micro is actually to give you the tools to see what you are doing. Uh, you looked at a lot of images today. None of it uh, you'd been able to look at unless we would have gone through the micro revolution that have built very capable microprocessors, very dense memory to store. You can't build a computer if you don't have compute and later on store, fetch, calculate, store again, etc. What Nano allows you to do is actually take it to the next level. So now that you have diagnosed and you have seen what you are doing, you can actually start doing some real stuff uh, about it. And that's what uh, Nano is all about, which is really the therapeutics, which really takes it to the next level. Uh, I don't expect you to read this chart, but I entered uh, this chart uh, somewhere up here, the three and a half micron. Uh, never believed that I'll get uh, into the Nano uh, space. Uh, when I entered into the micro side of the world, it was three and a half micron. The wafers were uh, two inch, three and a half inch. It has grown, but the important thing is it relates to what we are discussing today. The microprocessors become more and more capable, allowing us to see more and more, calculate faster, and get to the point where it's real business, not so much diagnosing the illness, but actually being able to uh, treat the illness. And this is the, if you will, the curve of the memory that we've been able to do. Just look here on the left side, the number of orders of magnitude. I entered the industry over here. We were at 10 to the fourth. Look at where we are today. Just unbelievable. Now, if you are talking about the uh, probability of success of the industry here in Israel, the nanomedicine industry, just look at uh, where the new elected president of Intel has decided to spend his uh, fourth week in the company. He's coming to Israel. He's not coming to Israel because he's Jewish. He's not coming to Israel to see landscape. He's coming to Israel because the heart and the core of what Intel is doing is being done here in Israel. So I was fortunate to be part of that revolution, but based on the signs that I've heard here today and some other information that I have, I'm pretty confident that Israel will play a major role uh, in that space, hopefully the same level that it does uh, in the micro field. So now that we know what we are doing and we have the ability to look at what we are doing, uh, we can get really down to business. I think I can skip these two slides that are more uh, graphical and focus on this slide that really shows you where the industry as an industry is uh, moving. And just look at uh, the number of uh, dollars that are going into the cancer area, 
look at the CNS, we talked about Alzheimer, which is the second bar, and you see that all the numbers are growing in all disciplines, and we're not talking anymore about research, meaning research will continue. Research is continuing in the semiconductor space and will continue. You are talking real numbers, real dollars, real millions of dollars uh, moving into this industry. This is another way to look at it, which is not dollars, which is more research being done. You can see that cancer is in the lead, uh, and for obvious reason, it's uh, one of the major causes for death. And we do have a very effective way of treating it, based on what you have heard from Bob and the rest of the young researchers that basically followed him. If you move to the next slide, it shows you that we are starting to take advantage of feature size. We are actually, more and more research is being done below the 100 nano. Okay, this is really a mean particle size, if you will, a, that's being used in, in applications for grants. So the vast majority is continuing to move, if you will, a, to the left side. If you want to sum that up in dollars, uh, it's really in infancy stages yet, $139 billion. For any, any industry, this would have been a significant number. For this industry, it's really, if you think trillions of dollars, it's really uh, relatively small. Uh, this chart actually shows you, if you will, uh, the drugs that are already in clinical use. You can see the number of clinical trials. So really, the best is yet to come. And this really illustrates something that I think has been discussed here, but this is something to show you why it's so important to move into nanomedicine. Most of the treatments today in cancer, uh, if you well know, we have the situation where the operation was successful, but the patient died, because what you end up doing is either putting chemo all over the body, killing everything, and if you're tough enough, you survive it. If you're not tough enough, tough luck. Well, what this thing allows you to do is to get an injection, and actually attack the tumor cells themselves. And the way it's being done uh, is luckily enough, uh, the blood vessels that feed the tumor are very positive, meaning they have a lot of small holes. To those small holes, the nanoparticles can be released into the cancer cells that are sitting right, right on top of it, attack them, and actually, hopefully, uh, cure the disease. So this is a very major change the way uh, I think we should look at it. This is a really an eye chart. I don't intend to have you read through that, but this is some of the research that's being done today in Tel Aviv. You can see projects in delivery. You can see projects in uh, therapeutics. You can see projects in diagnostics. We're really trying to address the whole uh, scope of projects uh, in that space. And we would really encourage you, if you will, to visit the lab, talk to the researchers, and get a feel exactly where we are. Thank you very much.